Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to discuss on postpartum hemorrhage, also known as PPH. Okay, so postpartum hemorrhage is defined as a severe vaginal bleeding after childbirth. It is a serious condition that can lead to death. Other signs of postpartum hemorrhage are dizziness, feeling faint, and blared vision. PPH can occur after delivery or up to 12 weeks postpartum. More than half of all maternal deaths occur within 24 hours of childbirth, mostly due to severe bleeding. PPH accounts for about 25% of maternal deaths worldwide. Rapid action is critical for survival. The causes of PPH include uh, a tonic uterus, retained placenta or fragments, tears of the uterus, the cervix, the vagina, and the perineum. Also, coagulation defects, inversion of uterus, as well as infection, which is um, uh, found in delayed PPH. Okay, let's look at the predisposing factors. So one of the predisposing factors is maternal age of 35 or above. We also have uh, delivery after antipartum hemorrhage, uh, multiple pregnancy, polyhydrominos. So polyhydrominos is simply um, a medical condition where you find that there is uh, excessive accumulation of amniotic fluid in the amniotic sac during pregnancy. Another predisposing factor is past history of um, PPH. So um, do not ignore any of the patient's complaints about dizziness, excessive bleeding, heart palpitations, uh, feeling of weakness and shortness of breath. This could be indicators for shock as a result of excessive bleeding. So PPH is a life-threatening complication that requires prompt and effective management. It is important to get all the help you can. Prevention of PPH is the best management. Let's look at the general steps uh, that you can uh, take uh, when you're trying to manage PPH. So first of all, you need to have a protocol in the labor ward. That protocol should include calling for help, performing rapid evaluations such as vital signs, which includes the blood pressure, pulse, respirations. You can also check uh, PALA. You need to massage the uterus, and if the patient is in shock, start resuscitation immediately. So start IV infusion of 1 liter per 15 minutes. Give oxytocin 10 international units IM then 20 international units in one liter of normal saline. You can also take blood for grouping and cross match. So 20 mils of blood is enough for coagulation studies. You can administer oxygen, elevate the foot end of the bed, catheterize the patient to monitor urine output, check placenta for completeness, examine the birth canal for tears, Monitor closely for further bleeding. When the patient has stabilized, check hemoglobin and treat anemia. So the fluids that you give during shock are the crystalloid fluids, such as uh, normal saline or Linger's lactate. So you need to use a large cannula, which is a 16G or bigger. So for you to start the resuscitation, you of course are using these crystalloid fluids. So you need to give uh, the first 1,000 mils rapidly in 15 to 20 minutes. Then give at least 2,000 mils in the first hour. Aim to replace two to three times the volume of the estimated blood loss. If the condition stabilizes, adjust the rate to 1,000 mils per six hours so you also need to monitor 
the blood pressure and pulse every 15 minutes and also the urine output every uh, hour. So you should avoid dextran as it interferes with blood grouping, cross matching as well as with coagulation of blood. In the cases of massive hemorrhage, order a minimum of six units of whole blood. Do not give fresh frozen plasma, which is known as the FFP, or platelets until hemorrhage has stopped or until at least five units of stored blood have been given. So among the causes of PPH, we didn't mention that a tonic uterus is among the causes of PPH. Let's look at how we can manage when a patient has a tonic uterus. So first of all, a tonic ut uterus, this is the failure of the uterus to contract sufficiently during and after childbirth. It can occur during both vaginal and cesarean delivery. The uterus is anatomically divided into three regions. The fundus, which is the upper part, the body, which is the main part, the cervix, which is the lower part. So the first action is to massage the uterus. Other measures include by manual uterine compression, aortic compression, condom tamponade, and surgery to perform uterine uh, artery ligation. We can also do catheter tamponade or hysterectomy. So this is how you manage uh, a tonic uterus. So remember, first thing is to massage the uterus. Then if it doesn't work, then you are going to use other measures such as by manual compression, condom tamponade, surgery, and aortic compression. Another cause of PPH that we can manage is retained placenta. A retained placenta is a condition that occurs when all or part of the placenta remains in the uterus after childbirth. Normally, the placenta is expelled from the uterus within 30 minutes after the baby is born during the third stage of labor. There are three main types of retained placenta. We have the placenta adherence. This is where the placenta remains attached to the uterine wall due to inadequate contractions or incomplete separation. We also have trapped placenta. This is where the placenta detaches from the uterine wall but becomes trapped behind a closed cervix. We also have uh, the third type, known, which is also known as uh, the placenta accreta. So this is where the placenta is abnormally attached to the uterine wall and penetrates into the uterine muscle, making it difficult to detach. So when it comes to management, you need to ensure that the bladder is empty, apply controlled cord traction. If it fails, repeat oxytocin 10 international units IM. If no success, after 30 minutes, attempt manual removal of the placenta. So you need to give pethidine and diazepam or ketamine. Give antibiotics ampicillin 2 gram and metronidazole 400 milligrams. You need to examine the placenta for completeness. Give oxytocin 20 international units per 1000 ml in normal saline or ringers lactate. Then you also need to monitor the blood pressure, the pulse, the sanitary pads, and also urine output closely. You can also add agat or prostaglandins if bleeding continues. You can also transfuse uh, whenever necessary and treat for anemia. Let's now look at secondary postpartum hemorrhage. So this is excessive bleeding from the genital tract that occurs between 24 hours and 6 weeks after childbirth. 
unlike primary postpartum hemorrhage, which happens within the first 24 hours after delivery, secondary postpartum hemorrhage typically results from retained placental fragments, infections such as endometritis or sub-involution of the placental sites, that is uh, when the uterus does not return to its normal size, and also malignancies such as cancer of the cervix and choriocarcinoma. Okay, so you need to do or perform vaginal swabs and the necessary scans. Now, the symptoms of secondary uh, postpartum hemorrhage includes um, heavy vaginal bleeding, clots, abdominal pain, and signs of infection such as uh, fever or foul smelling discharge. So, management is usually um, usually involves identifying and treating the underlying causes which may include medications to contract the uterus antibiotics for infection or surgical interventions to remove retained tissues so this is what i had for you on uh, postpartum hemorrhage if you have any questions leave your questions in the comment section like share the video and also subscribe see you in the next session